Guys. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the FedEx Forum here in Memphis, Tennessee, where tonight, Goose and Tudor Promotions and Star Boxing in association with Prize Fight Boxing, ParadisePoker.com and HBO Sports present an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment. This first bout brought to you in association with Debella Entertainment and Banner Promotions. All bouts sanctioned by the Tennessee State Boxing Commission, the three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Gerald Deming, Bruce Foster, and Alex McCallum. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Randy Phillips. And now, 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the junior middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with black, official weight, 155 and one half pounds. Professional record, 38 victories, including 20 knockouts, with 10 defeats and one draw from the mile high city of Denver, Colorado, the former three-time junior middleweight champion of the world, Verno Phillips. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with gold. Official weight, 156 pounds. Professional record, 35 victories, including 30 knockouts with only two defeats and one draw from Accra, Ghana, the former welterweight champion of the world, Ike Bazooka Corte. Come on, fighters. Okay, gentlemen, we've already gone over the rules. I want y'all to listen to my commands at all times. I say break, I want to step back, protect yourself at all times. Reminder, the three knockdown rule is in effect. Standing eight counts in effect. So any questions for me to say? Good luck to both of you. As a welterweight, Ike Cortez's great advantage was his great strength. He was stronger than most opponents he fought. Let's see how he does as he moves up in weight. So good to see him back in the ring. Quarte's promoter, Lou DeBella, says that the plan is for him to fight as a middleweight. Given that he came very close to actually making 154 here, and because he's so strong for his weight, Roy, why wouldn't he come back at 154? Well, I think he should start at 154, and I think he'd actually be a good fight for a person like uh, Winky Wright. Be a tough fight for Winky Wright if he can get himself back into great form. Be a tough fight for both of them. <laughs> There's the left hand of Quarte. You saw him jab and then hook off the jabs. Quarte throws two shots to the body there right. and takes right. shots to the good body fight. in return. One thing I told us yesterday when we sat with him for 30 minutes is that he didn't think he threw enough punches to the body previously in his career. And now that he's a little bit older and going to be fighting as a veteran fighter, that's something he wants to remember to do. Speaking of Winky Wright, you may notice a similarity in their styles. That's why I said it'd be a good fight. He claims that Winky Wright took his style <laughs> when they were friends fighting in France. Verno just had a great shot to hurt uh, Ike Corte, to be honest with you. He did indeed. His Phillips got in a man. brilliant left hook up to Ayers and then hurt Corte with a left hook <laughs> right on the belt line. Uh, overhand right and that hurt him. Phillips banging away to Corte's body, testing the resolve of a guy who has been away from this level of competition for quite a while. Quarte fighting as always with his hands held very high. Talk about the absence of body punching from his arsenal previously in his career. Of course, when he got a weapon like his jab, sometimes it's hard to remember to do anything else. Yep. It's 
been an interesting first round as Phillips has tested Quarte with that right hand over the top. Ike, who was momentarily wobbled earlier, now seems to be on solid ground as he goes back to work with the left hand. There's a good left hook by Phillips right under Quarte's chin. All right, Blake, step back, no punch. You get the impression maybe Ike hasn't been hit very hard in the gym. Well, Phillips is punching much better than they gave him credit for punching. Phillips is a good puncher. He has a lot of knockouts on his record. I don't know why they say he's not a good puncher, but he's showing that he does possess beautiful punching power. Well, 20 KOs in 38 wins, total of 20 KOs in 49 fights. Those aren't the numbers that usually suggest to somebody that he's a big puncher. No, but if you watch him, he's definitely throwing some big punches here. And I don't know how long he can throw them. He's catching Ike Corte with some solid shots. A good round for Phillips. When we go to Corte's corner, where they speak the tribal language, Ga, our interpreter is Fred Asifo. And Corte looks Don't over at Roy it. Jones for assurance, as if to say, was I OK in there? Yeah. No, breathing very deeply. Interesting. Drinks of water. I, I can be too slow. You're being too slow. You're making him take the round. You have to get in fast. Be very busy. I want you to be very busy, okay? Relax, you're doing great, baby. Hey, don't rush yourself. Like I said, keep it at your pace. One and more. We know we're next time. Hey, keep it at your pace, baby. Keep using your jab, do not reach with your jab. Here you see Vernon Phillips land, land a right hand over the top of the jab with a beautiful shot that hurt Ike Corte. Then he followed with a beautiful left body shot. That was a great combination. Then he came back here, slipped the jab, and followed with a left hook, a sneak left hook that really hurt Ike also. And you heard Corte's trainer, Daniel Odomton, saying to him, you were too slow, Ike. You need to be in and out faster than that. Copy box numbers in the round showed what Phillips was trying to do. He landed 19 out of 52 punches and 18 of them were power shots. So clearly Berno Phillips wanted to test Quarte's chin right, and his resolve no from the get-go. He's trying to find punch. out can I take his punch or not. Well, and what he's trying to find out is if whether a veteran fighter who's been away is willing to stay tough when the going gets tough. Good body shot by Quarte. Phillips comes back over the top. And free. All right, hands are free, gentlemen. Let's go. All right, break. Step back. Box. Lead left hand by Phillips, and he gets in four punches before Quarte finally throws back. Verno Phillips is beating Ike Quarte to the punch and landing more power shots. There's a good hard right hand by Quarte as he took advantage of Phillips' miss. Phillips coming back with three hard shots to the body. Quarte blocked one with his elbow. Good left right by Quarte, stopping Phillips from the onslaught there. Phillips' mouthpiece hits the canvas. And the mouthpiece is just going to wait. Come right here. It now the proverbial that lull in the action, Phillips and once again, Ike Quarte looks at Roy Jones uh, as if for approval. Box. Oh, hands free. Verno Phillips feels he may be stronger and quicker than Corte, and he's willing to stand right in there with him. Yeah, Ike, Ike has to get a little bit more uh, upper torso movement, though. His upper torso is definitely too still, and that's why he's getting caught with these big punches. He has no side-to-side -side movement upstairs. But that's well, I what I meant, Roy, when I said he was so strong as a welterweight, he was able to overcome any technical deficiencies. Yeah, well, he won't be able to be so easy to overcome him here. Uh, this oh, is a bigger man he's in front of. Well, and Verno Phillips has made a very intelligent decision to try to make it a fight, not a boxing match. And he has managed in the first couple rounds to accomplish exactly that.
Duarte has not been able to get a repeating oh, rhythm oh, on his jab. Right. 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 And Phillips right. is hitting right. him with right. the right. right. Duarte on the inside. Yeah, the uppercut hurt him real, real bad. We invite our West Coast audience to stay tuned later tonight for the premiere of Making the Cut and all access look at comedy stars Ray Romano and Kevin James as they attempt to realize their dreams by making the cut at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am Golf Tournament. Okay, outside the shoulders, baby. Outside the shoulders. Use your jab, okay? Do not reach with your jab. Stop reaching with your punches, okay? Take one step back. Hook, hook all day. Then you're gone. Okay, when you're stepping around, you're not getting your head out. You gotta get your head out, too. They don't just step around. You're gonna catch with that hook. Don't, don't block all his shots. Let, let him miss. And then close. Get close to him. And stay close to him. Okay? Yeah, your jobs are not there. The body punches are not there. Okay. Stay close to him. Mike Corte trying to shake the cobwebs out of his legs. Roy, as he comes out. Yeah, sometimes his layoff is very difficult to come right back like this, especially in a tough fight, a tough fighter like a Bruno Phillips. Let's see if Corte can impose his will by trying to make it more of a boxing match and less of a fight. That'll probably depend on how long Phillips can fight with this kind of energy. And of course, he trained in Colorado at no altitude no in hope of bolstering his chances. CompuBox numbers in round two, Quarte 16 out of 45, but Phillips landed another 13 power shots. So he's landed 31 power shots in the first two rounds, and there's another over the top right hand. And it hurts from, he hurts Mike like Quarte with almost every hard shot he hits him with. This time, Quarte stands his ground, comes back with a right hand uppercut. Yesterday, we asked Corte if coming back was about seeking revenge against Deloy and Vargas. And the answer was not necessarily, but those are the kinds of opponents he wants to fight, people who can bring big money to the table. That's right. Why waste his time fighting anybody else? Well, the question becomes, does that mean no Winky Wright? <laughs> and, and the basic answer was no, no Winky Wright. <laughs> he better worry about Verno Phillips. Right now, he better. I uh, called Phillips the gatekeeper. There won't be much of a big comeback for Quarte if he can't guess pa get past this. And right now, Phillips continues giving at least as good as he's getting. There's a great right hand followed by the left by Quarte, and now his jab starts to develop the force that it showed in his earlier career. When he moved his head side to side a little bit more, I seen him slip a few punches. That's definitely a much better sign like that right there. That's what he has to do to stay in this fight because staying straight up is not a thing to do against the front of Phillips. He, he also seems to be seeing Phillips' punches better, Roy. He's getting his guard up when he sees them. He's not just standing and observing them. I break, step back. Step and absorbing back. them as well. Maybe he was a bit taken by surprise by the fact that Phillips wasn't setting anything up with the jab, but rather just firing Hello, power break, shots. Step back. Box. Think Ring taking, rust, Troy. Yeah, that too, but I think he mainly was taken by Phillips' punching power. Keep your feet out. Keep your feet out. Listen to me. You're getting hungry again. Aye, aye. Stop getting hungry. Yeah. Two and three in step. Like I said, he was falling apart. Two and three in step, then look for your power shots. All right. Stop reaching in with your right hand. All right. Okay? You're falling off balance every time you're throwing that right hand. All I don't right. want to see that no more. Big rinse for me. You have to step to the side. You have to step to the side. You realize that since you started stepping to the side, he's missing. Now he's starting he started getting tired. Straight in your right hand. He see Phillips in another big left hook right there. That buckle Ike a little bit. Kind of like beating Ike to the punch with the left hook. Suck is up! 
Get the water up in y'all's corner now. Back up. Combi box numbers in round three for the first time. Quarte oh. outlanded Phillips 13 out of 51 to 11 of 47. So the fight is becoming more even after Verno Phillips appeared to win the first two rounds. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim. Two rounds to one. 29, 28. Verno Phillips. Jim, I tell you, the first two rounds, I thought Verno Phillips hurt Ike Quarte in both of them. He staggered him in both, the, both of the first two rounds. In round three of this slugging match, uh, Ike Quarte came in. Little bit landed, a few more good power shots. Seems to back up Verno Phillips, so he's the effective aggressor. I thought Ike won the third round. Two to one, Phillips. There's a jab from Phillips. Quarte with a jab of his own. Quarte's looking to get into that rhythm where he can begin I pumping the jab two, no three point. times at a time. No, no, keep him up now. Slack him on, keep him up. You heard trainer Trevor Whitman asking Verno Phillips to stop reaching with the right hand. And now Phillips isn't throwing as many punches. All right, break, step back, no punches. Box. Look like Ike may be starting to warm up a little bit now. And I know the later the fight goes, the better it's gonna be for him because he's definitely gonna be in great condition, if nothing else. Hands free. But Phillips is dangerous at all times. Good right hand by Quarte. Phillips carelessly three. dropped right. his left, and Quarte fired the lead right hand to the side of his cheek. Good left hook by Phillips there. And he steps back out of the way of Quarte's jab. A lot of punches being thrown with mean intentions. And there's swelling outside the right eye of Ike Quarte. From that Phillips left hook. All right, Bright, step back. Quarte doing a little oh. better job as each round progresses of cutting off the ring so that he can return Phillips' fire and sometimes beat him to the punch. Fight heating up. Four rounds in the books. Still to come tonight, light heavyweight showdown. Glenn Johnson beat Antonio Tarver in December to become the top man in the division. No belts, just competitive success. The thing that best defines a champion fighter. And the opponent, Antonio Tarver, who has had his share of belts in the past, but is more interested in revenge tonight against Johnson, who beat him in that close decision in December. Tarver has twice previously avenged losses Knocking out Eric Harding and knocking out Roy Jones. Nobody talks a better game. How will he fight tonight? Gombi box numbers on jabs through the fourth round. Quarte 16 out of 84. Phillips 8 out of 39. Let's go. Moment. Momentary oh. timeout as they retape the glove of Ike Quarte. Quarte's been warming to the task in the last couple of rounds. We start the fifth of a scheduled 10 here. Keep the pressure on. Quarte definitely doing 
a far better job of seeing Bruno Phillips's punches coming than was the case in the first couple of rounds. I hands free. I think a little of that ring rust has worn off now, Jim. I think he got his kind of got his rhythm a little bit, and he can see a little bit better now. And he's starting on on some occasions to throw the two, three jabs at a time that define his game. <laughs> Meanwhile, Phillips's punches don't have the kind of snap that they had in the first three rounds. Little left hook by Quarte backs Phillips off there. Hard shot I to the body step back. by Ike. Step back. Box. Hi, Bryce. Bryce. Box. Hard right hand by Quarte, stopping Phillips in his tracks. Quarte now able to stalk a little bit as Phillips begins to back up. But he still has to be careful, Jim, because Phillips is still dangerous and still looking for one big shot because he knows he can hurt Ike. But he's being much less assertive now than he was in the first two rounds. Yeah, he's definitely starting to tire a little bit. Yeah. All right, break, step back, no punch. Box. Phillips, by his own admission, ran out of gas against Kasim Uma in their second fight and says that he made a mistake standing and trading with Uma when he should have boxed and moved. I don't think you'll see many guys that won't run out of gas against Kasim right, Uma. No How would you not? Exactly Box. right. Come on, John, my hands are free. Quarte says the fight that persuaded him he needed to come back was watching Oscar De La Hoya against Bernard Hopkins. Probably he was watching the dollar signs too. July 8, look for the next installment of Costas Now. Last episode, Bob visited with Detroit Pistons head coach Larry Brown, talked sports with a panel of Phil Sims, Mark Cuban, and Tom Brokaw. If it's happening in sports, it's happening on Costas Now, each month on HBO. Nothing full? Yeah, yeah. I'm just keeping it. Hey, hey, give me a wrist. Keep your mouthpiece in. Look at me. When you're sitting inside, hey, when you're sitting inside, spin, spin baby. baby. Stop, Stop sitting, sitting there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Stop sitting inside. Yes. Mm. Step to the side. Okay. okay. We're in the sixth round. Okay, we're going to the sixth round. Okay. Right. He's getting tired. So put a lot of pressure on him. Here's an interesting number, Roy. Phillips' punch output has diminished in each round. First round, 52 punches. Second round, 51. Third round, 47. Fourth round, 39. Fifth round, 34. Probable <laughs> translation, Quarte is landing better and hitting harder every round. And that's what you would expect. You know, I definitely going to be always in top condition. He's a little older now, but he's still going to be very well conditioned. 35 and not having fought in five years. Does it make him really 30? <laughs> Kinda. Punches in the fifth round. Quarte 17 out of 56. Phillips only six out of 34. And you heard Phillips' trainer Trevor Whitman saying, don't get caught on the inside. Spin out of there. They're starting to get concerned about Quarte's hard punches. Right, step back, no punch. Punch. Phillips just landed a good body shot, though. One at a time now, though. Yep. He was landing combinations earlier. Well, now he doesn't want to stay in there for the comeback. So he's moving out after he throws there almost every punch. Far easier for Quarte to become the commander when he's fighting against a one punch at a time attack. Yep. And he's throwing a heck of a body, body attack against Phillips now, which is smart. Add a body attack to that jab and the fireworks upstairs, you might have an even better offensive fighter than Quarte was the first time around. Uh, 
Forte had never lost right, a fight step back. Right, no prior point. to meeting Jose Luis Lopez Fire. late in 1998. He walked away from the arena that night thinking he had won the fight, even though he was down three times oh, in the late going. Eventually, the commission in Connecticut changed the scoring on the fight and turned it into a draw. So now he had the first blemish on his record, a draw. Then he fought Oscar De La Hoya in February, and even though he was knocked down in the 12th round of that fight, he thought he'd won it as did some ringside observers. That prompted him to wait 14 months before fighting Fernando Vargas, and when Vargas won that fight, Cuarte said enough, went home to Ghana, built two hotels and a hospital, became an entrepreneur, and started watching fights on TV. And eventually he said, I'm still as good as those guys. More and more, it's starting to look like maybe he was thinking the right way. And free. You get the feeling that the thoroughbred is starting to take over the race. Took a deep breath. Took some deep breaths. Keep backing him up, Ike. Uh, Put the pressure on. Yeah, you're back in the bike. Hey, keep it basic. You know what you came here to do. Good adjustment that round. Uh -huh. Keep it going. You won that round. Okay, he's losing his mental game when you're doing that. Keep it basic, mouthpiece. Keep boxing. Look at me. Look at me. You got him. Keep boxing. Uh -huh. These are your rounds, bro. You got four more. You got me? Suck is up! Wipe the water in your corner. Back up. Back up. Wipe that water up. Trevor oh. Whitman very confidently tells Verno Phillips that he won that round, even though copy box numbers show Quarte landing twice as many punches. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim, 58, 56, four rounds to two, Ike Bazooka Quarte. Jim, and I, I gotta tell you, this fight is not hard to score. Just look at Verno Phillips' mouth. Since round three, he's been sucking air like crazy. Now, now look right here. Grab right, right, no right. it, hold it on, because he's absolutely tired. I, I mean, the guy is just, I don't know if he's out of condition or what. He spit out the mouthpiece once on purpose because he couldn't breathe, and now he's having a hard time breathing. I thought they just keep, keep walking him down, landing power shots. 4 2 Corte. Bruno Phillips says he was in the gym 11 weeks to prepare for this fight. Maybe he's. Overtrained? No, I don't think he's overtrained. I just think uh, this pressure he's probably not used to. Ike's making him fight a big pace, and plus he came out through a lot of big bombs early, and that's probably not normal for him. I agree with Roy. I was about to say he was fighting at a pace the first couple of rounds that was not his kind of fight. It would be his kind of fight if he could have finished it there, but he didn't. I have the score, incidentally, three rounds to two and one even. And once again, you see Bruno Phillips gulping for air as he did there. But, but I can't underestimate Bruno because Bruno's still dangerous. Quarte busting Phillips on the top of the head with the right hand. Right, step back. In this American comeback appearance, Quarte has shown you flashes of the famous jab. He's landed some body punches that are better and more frequent than whatever body punching we would have seen from him in his previous glorious career. And he started to land power shots upstairs with both hands as the fight has progressed. Phillips is Ring Magazine's number 354 pounder. Ring Magazine ranks only Winky Wright champion and Kasim Uma, number one contender, ahead of Bruno Phillips on the 154 pound weight class. So you have to assume that if Quarte scores a quality win over Phillips here, he's back in the Ring Magazine 154 pound rankings and pretty high up, maybe as high as third. Well, Jamma has a three now. 
Got to give him credit right. for being off for five years and coming back, taking an opponent like this in his second fight. Uh. He looks like he's starting to have fun in there. He is. He's getting warmed up. He's getting starting to see things better. And it's just a matter of getting your timing back. That's why you want to fight and get in the ring for a little while. We remind you, coming up between fights, we'll have a live conversation with the two men you'll be watching next Saturday night, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Floyd Mayweather Jr., Arturo Gatti, fighting each other at 140 pounds in that weight class where so much talent has now coalesced. Last Saturday night, you saw Miguel Cotto, the rising star of the 140-pound weight class. The week before that, Ricky Hatton beat Costa Zou. Here's another showcase for two great fighters in that weight okay, class. Two and three in step. On the inside, when you tie up, make sure you spin. Don't stand there. Okay, he's got one hand free. Don't give him that balance. One more drink. One more drink. Mouthpiece. Look at me. Okay. Finish it with a double hook. Okay. Duarte, the second most famous fighter ever to emerge from Ghana, only as Zuma Nelson accomplished more in his career. Duarte has outlanded Phillips oh, no, the last no, no. five rounds oh, by no, copy no. box count. Here you go. No, 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 no. Y'all wipe it up. Box. Dry that up. Referee is named Randy Phillips. He's from here in Tennessee. Low blow by Quarte. Hard left hook by Quarte, and an even harder left hook by Bruno Phillips. Phillips, <laughs> best punch since the first two rounds. I told you, he's still dangerous. But the Quarte, who was wobbled by that kind of punch in the first two rounds, walks through this one pretty resolutely. Bruno Phillips said it was his dream to fight on HBO. No, 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 no. He's had to wait a long time for that. <laughs> I break, no punching, break. Very good psychological move. Figures since he had been down the floor, he may as well make I can see what the floor feels like too. <laughs> Surprising. That time, right. Quarte blocked the that left hook with the right like this would just fall down. And free fight. I break, no punch. Break, step back. Box. Break, break, no punch. Grab behind the head. Keep your head up. Box. Roy, what are the factors that make Quarte's jab so dominant? Is it is it just his sheer strength, or is there a mechanical element here his, that makes it better? His strength, and he puts all of his weight into his jab. If you watch him, once he throws the jab, he's all forward. Everything goes into that jab. He throws it like a power, like a like a spear or something. Watch him. Watch him. So it's an all-body punch, not just a flick of the arm. Exactly. Ooh. That's those, a hard body shot. Those, those two jabs just then were just faints. Right, no they punch. weren't really jab. When he throws the jab, he puts everything huh. into that jab. He means to knock you off balance with the jab if he can. That'll reduce some of the impact of your attack. The older fighter, or at least the comebacking fighter, is just outworking Phillips. Take a deep breath. Uh, anytime you use a left hook, raise your, your right. Bring your right we are right now. We're winning all these rounds, okay? That's the cost of too much. Maybe Zimbabwe. You got money? I said, you got money, bro. You're, you're doing your thing right now. You're doing your thing. Hey, don't forget the jab to the body. Every time you throw the jab to the body, it's an easy way in, okay? Don't forget the step when you're done. You got me? 
Yeah. Left uppercut inside, but that's there. Watch baby. out for his hook. He's getting desperate. He see uh, Phillips the right hook to the body, left hook to the head. His best, most effective shot in the company. Copy box numbers in eight. Quarte 17 out of 54. Phillips 8 out of 29. In other words, Ike throwing and landing basically twice as many. Harold Letterman saw it that way as well, and Quarte continues the string of winning rounds on the Letterman card. Straight right hand lead by Quarte. Quarte and Phillips were born two days apart in 1969. Quarte two days after Phillips, so he's fighting more like the younger fighter today, right, Jim. He's two days younger. I got it. <laughs> All right, break, break, no punch. I'm grabbing behind the head and hit it. All right. Box. In his comeback fight against a fighter named Clinton McNeil in Accra, Ghana, January 14, Quarte scored an eighth round knockout. Promoter Lou DeBella says that it was a wild scene. Only about 10,000 people in the arena, but because it's an outdoor arena, you can see from beyond the stands and that tens of thousands of Ghanaians congregated around the arena to watch and to celebrate Quarte's win. Chopping right hand over the top for Quarte. Have to assume that he physically wore down an opponent in Ghana on the way to an eighth round knockout. He's trying to physically wear down Berno Phillips here and discourage him to try to keep him from finishing a 10 round fight. We're in the night. You still gotta be careful, but Berno is still dangerous, trust me. See? And there's a huge cut on the foot from Berno Phillips that puts Quarte right on his back. Quarte's bouncing and grinning, trying to convince the referee he's okay, but he's still wobbly. I told you, I told you, Fernando was still dangerous. And he knows it as he grabs and holds. I told you, Fernando was still dangerous. He's tired, but he's deadly dangerous. People don't realize it. Reminiscent of the left hook, Delaboya delivered to knock him down in the 12th round of their fight. Yeah. You would think that an experienced fighter like Bro. Phillips would go about this in a much better, more measured way. Phillips caught Quarte with the right hand, catches him with another left. Now Quarte feels like he's got his left back, hammers Phillips and knocks him away from him. Quarte trying to retaliate and put Phillips on his back. Quarte's knees touch the canvas, and the referee is going to allow it to be a slip, not a knockdown. Could have been a second knockdown. Could have been. I'm in wet. Take a deep breath. Now get him some water. Take a deep breath. Hey. Hey, can you see me? Raise your hand. Don't Take a don't deep breath. Don't, don't, don't go to the toe. Don't go to the toe. Keep it tight. He's desperate. You got this fight. Okay? The reason why you hurt him, you buy him to you. Now keep it disciplined, baby. Last round, baby, all right? It's the last one. You do you, don't fall apart. Hey, okay. if you hurt him, do not get head hungry. Go to that. He see Ike throwing a hook, and Phillips came with a left hook of his own and caught Ike straight up in the air. And it was a beautiful shot. He threw a left, a right body shot, a right overhand right first. Then he came back with a left hook and caught Ike right up in the air. I said at the start of the fight that we want to see how a comebacking veteran can be tough when, this, when the situation gets tough. And here is the supreme test of that. And we've got scoring suspense after presumably a two-point round for Phillips. So if there are judges who don't have Quarte ahead by the same margin that Harold Letterman sees, maybe he's in danger of losing the fight on the cards now. Phillips is re-energized by having knocked Quarte down on the night. Like I told you, Phillips still was dangerous, and now he's even more dangerous. I have to be careful here they don't get knocked out in this last round.
This is the Berno Phillips of the first two rounds, who was firing power punches in combination. Yep. Can't relax. I just said it in the last round. You can't relax again, Berno Phillips, but he's still a dangerous puncher. And this is the Ike Corte of the first two rounds, who looks a little unsure of himself now. Phillips looked tired and beaten until he landed that punch. And now he's on his toes trying to finish the fight. All right, break, step back, no punch. Box. The scoring of this round could be significant. And so far, Quarte seems far more conscious than Phillips is of the desire to win the round. Because Phillips is an instant in knockout. He knows if he can get a knockdown, he gets the round. And that's all he's trying to do, man. One big shot like that to drop Quarte. He's not trying to win the round with punches. He wants to win with a knockdown. It's possible, Roy, that Phillips may have been lulled into a sense of false security about the oh, scoring of the fight right, from his no corner. Point. That could have happened too. And that he may, he may think that just by finishing the fight, he's won it. You know, at the end of the day, if you look back at his career, Ike Quarte has always been susceptible to left hooks. Jose Luis Lopez put him down with left hooks. Right, Oscar right, De La Hoya no put him down right, twice with left hooks. Right. Fernando Fuck. Vargas basically beat him with a left hook. That's because he doesn't move that upper torso too much, Jim. He's pretty much a straight-up fighter. Fights like European fighters, and he's always open for that hook. So yeah. if you bring the third punch in the combination, the clean-up hook, you, you got a shot. Yeah. Good right hand by Quarte. And his punches does does seem to have the effect on the super middleweights, I mean, uh, super welterweight, as it did the welterweight. Most welterweights weren't taking those punches. A Corte assault. Ike Corte won the 12th round. That probably the 10th round. may have won the 12th round and tenth. possibly the fight. 10th round. 10th round. And, uh, yeah. But the bottom line is, Roy Jones made a great point. Phillips was trying to win the 10th round with a knockdown. Quarte won the 10th round with Good boxing. Work. Yep. Good fight. You look young as hell tonight, baby. Good fight, man. Thanks, man. Thank Great job. Yeah. Good fight. Great job, Colonel. Way to stay disciplined, baby. This is a good night, baby. Very good. Can you give me that in the beginning, huh? Yeah. Great job, Colonel. Yes. Here's a look at Harold Letterman's final scorecard, and Harold, a key point about uh, Ike Cortez's knee touching the canvas toward the end of the ninth round. Jim, Jim you know, in my estimation, uh, referee Randy Phillips absolutely blew it. In other words, at the end of the ninth round, I thought that Verno Phillips clearly knocked down Ike Cortez. Randy Phillips yelled, no knockdown. Now, if he would have called it a knockdown, that would have made it a 10-7 round rather than 10-8. Verno would have got another point and possibly might have pulled this fight out. There's a look at what happened at the end of the round. Now, if that's not a knockdown, I've never seen a knockdown. Well, except that Phillips didn't land any really big punches that caused that. Jim, a punch knocked the ball off his feet. It's a knockdown. Three times. Let's get it. Perhaps a big break for Ike Quarte. We'll see exactly Ooh, what the final scores show us. Yeah, I'm on HBO. Still cool. Doing a big Still thing. Cool. Still going. 17 years. Hey, great job. Great job. In case you're wondering about CompuBox numbers in the fight, Quarte landed more, threw more, landed more power punches, doubled Phillips in jabs. Statistically, Quarte holds the edge in the fight. However, Phillips dominated the first couple of rounds with power punches and then knocked Quarte down in the ninth. This will be interesting. Taze, Josh, Alexa. I love you. Great job. There are Korean markings on Phillips' arms and chest. He is married to a Korean woman who manages a post office. 
And Michael Buffer has the final scores, so let's find out who won the fight from ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Bruce Foster scores the belt 95-94. Gerald Deming has it 95-94. And Alex McCallum scores at 96-93, all to the winner by unanimous decision after 10 rounds. Ike Cortez!